okay guys so how's it going today so it's only been like i think like three or four days since i mowed my grass needs to be cut again and then we got a cat so yeah i guess i'm gonna have to mow tomorrow i was gonna do it tonight but then i would have the sunlight in my eyes and then I would not be able to see where I'm mowing. So I guess I'll uh, do it tomorrow. Should probably get out at like 10, 10 in the morning and do it, but whatever. So anyways, um, she's probably like a million degrees in the shop. Oh, of course, you could cook a damn pizza in here. So anyways, um, I'm not really sure how to start this story. But, uh, <clears throat> I'd say it's a pretty good story, but, yeah. So, anyways, um, I know, uh, well, this was, this would have been last, well, the, the <laughs> video before the last video you guys saw there, uh, the video, the one before the one I was talking about the cow would have been that video on, you know, on the truck so I know a lot of you guys were saying I'm actually kind of wore out so a lot of you guys were saying that the only way you're going to get that stick out of the out of the cylinder would be to take just to take the head off and that's the only way you're going to do it one guy recommended to take the vacuum to it and try to suck it out well the only thing I could use obviously is a shot vac because they're the only things that are designed to suck moisture a regular vacuum, uh, kind of like what's here, this little red guy right here, that's an older vacuum. Still works, just needs a new belt, but we've never gotten around to get a new belt. So, And then my sister ended up moving, so then we just bought her vacuum because she didn't want to haul that big thing. So we never bothered to fix this one. But anyways, um, somebody was recommending to suck the stick out of the cylinder. Well, I don't think that would work. Because the stick is floating in that stuff. It's not just sinking to the bottom and sitting there. It's it, it's floating. And how do I know it was floating? Because I ripped the damn head off. It wasn't exactly an easy job. Well, easy, but it wasn't like, you know, it's not fun. I don't, I don't like tearing engine blocks apart. It's not exactly my thing to do. Especially since I'm not exactly... A mechanic I mean the only way you're gonna learn how to fix engines is just to rip one apart and try to put it back together so this will be somewhat of a learning experience for me anyway to put this thing back together but <clears throat> and it's just like I, I just took the damn head off I didn't um, it's kind of weird because the exhaust headers are hooked to that and the air cleaners hooked to that and the carburetors hooked to that and all that stuff but i didn't really want to unhook all that because i figured well that's there's a lot of craft to unhook and nobody wants to do that and my camera's is very dirty is that better i think that's better but yeah so i didn't really want to remove all that shit just because it's a little unnecessary so surprisingly i just took what i could apart and 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 I was able to kind of slide the head over and also tilt it a little bit. And that gave me enough access to get to all the cylinders and to get the stick out of the cylinder. So, we saved, we avoided a, a disaster. Because some of you guys are saying that probably would damage the walls of the cylinder over time. Probably would, because, I, I mean, eventually that's that, if you did leave the stick in there, it probably would just eventually turn to, like, fine powder. And it would just seep through, you know, everything. And then get stuck, and then it'll scratch and dig at the wall. So, yeah. So, we got the stick out, so that's one crisis avoided. Unfortunately, since I did take the head off... <clears throat> I think it knocked a lot of junk into the cylinders. So I'm going to have to clean the cylinders anyway. The top of them anyway. And scrub the walls a little bit with a rag and some water. Soapy water or something like that. I don't know. 
Um, because there's junk in, in the in the bottom of them. Well, it'd be the top of the, of the pistons, but you know, you can get to that just by pushing the. You could get to that just by pushing the cylinder up and then wiping it, pushing the cylinder back down and wipe it again. So, anyways, um, yeah. So, I figured, okay, well, I'm going to this afternoon. I went to look at the grain truck again. Um, I checked the level in the truck. You know, the 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 level of the crap that I put in the cylinders. Think of the shit, man. Come on. It's a waste of time. The 50-50 mix that I put on the cylinders, one cylinder leaked all of it down right away. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not because I filled that cylinder and I think within like a day or two, that cylinder is dry. All the other ones were still holding, but you could tell that they were leaking down slowly. So, so I figured, okay, well, we have one cylinder that's a positive of not being stuck because the stuff went down right away. I hope that's not a bad sign that it's leaking that stuff that quick. Because if that if that's the case, if that stuff's just pouring right through the cylinders and going into the engine block, that's that might be a sign that the O-rings could be out on that cylinder and you know but I looked at the walls and the walls didn't look scarred or anything as far as I could tell so I don't know maybe it's just you know that cylinder is just really really good yet it's still a pretty strong cylinder so but anyways I was think tinkering around with the truck some more I figured okay well I'm going to put the big the big wrench on the on the uh, the pulley, the big nut that's on the pulley, and of course I couldn't do anything by hand. You know I don't have enough arm strength to really do anything like that. So I looked for a, like a big pipe or something. And surprisingly, we have plenty of big pipes at the farm. I don't really have anything here in the shop, but I don't really need one anyway. But so I found this, I think it was like a maybe a three foot, inch and a half wide pipe, whatever, you know, and I stuck it on the end of the wrench and I just kind of just gently pulled on it and just kind of kept gently doing that. This kind of increased pressure, you know, like, you know, I just kept pulling on it, right? I just kept increasing my pulling power and <clears throat> kept doing that, kept doing that to the point where... I was like, okay, this is usually the, the part where the socket slips off the nut. Because I've done that be before. And then when you get to that really hard spot, then everything just explodes and falls off. So then you end up you, know, you end up running your knuckle into something and then you you know you hurt yourself. So I'm 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 pulling on the cylinder and then all of a sudden the whole thing just moved. The whole thing just, everything turned. I was like, well, it didn't fall off this. Was it? I mean, it didn't fall off the nut. So I was like, why did it move? So then I did it again. And my God, the engine's free. The engine's freaking turning on the green truck. I can't believe it. It's a goddamn miracle. So uh, it was a little bit stiff at first. Um, because I, I, and you can only go, like, you can only turn it so far. And then it seems like you hit, like, a, like, a hard spot. And I think that's when that one cylinder's all the way up. You know, then you can't really, it seems like after that you can't really do anything. So, but usually when the cylinder's way at the very top, that's usually where the firing happens. And then the cylinder comes back down, you know, with force. So... But once that one cylinder got to the very top, I couldn't turn the engine anymore. But then I turned it the other way. I went back the opposite way and I kept doing that until one of the cylinders, I think it was probably even the same cylinder, until it went back to the top again. And then I, I couldn't turn it I couldn't turn it any further. Unless you're really unless you're really, really strong, but the thing is is that when you would let go of the wrench then the engine would actually turn back to the way 
it, you know, back to its natural sitting spot. So I'm just figuring, well, that's probably just what it's doing, you know. So, but I don't know. I'm taking it as since all the cylinders are moving, it's a free truck. The question will be now, obviously, getting it to getting it to fire. So. That's a promising sign there that I think that this grain truck wants to be saved. It wants to be back on the road again. Um, it's still going to need a lot of work, though. It's, you just can't put spark plugs in it and go because that's not that's not going to happen. Uh, so the main thing, though, is to get the engine free. If you have the engine free, everything's just going to be fairly simple then. So... But yeah, I uh, can't believe that happened. I can't believe that that the engine decided to let go and it it turned. So, problem. But still, the the thing I have to do yet. Um, nice truck. So the the only thing I'm going to have to do, just because I want to do it, because it makes me feel better. Um, like I said. I'm going to have to clean the top of the, the top of the pistons. I'm going to clean the sidewalls. I'm going to get all that crap off. I don't think it's I don't think it's rust. I think it's just um, crap that's been building up in like between the head and the block. And then when you decide to move all that, you know, then you're breaking it all free, and then and then it falls into the to the cylinders. I don't think that's part of the gasket. And if it is, well, too bad. It'll you can run without one for a while. I mean, you can still you can still find them. It wouldn't be a problem, I guess, to change them out. But I don't really want to remove that head any more than I have to. So if I can get away with just reusing the old gasket, I'm going to do it. Unless I just um, get some, like, gasket sealing stuff. It's kind of like a gasket, but it's in, like, a gooey form. And you could just, you know, squeeze that out. And then you just set your cylinder on top of that, I guess, or whatever. Or your... Your head on top of that kind of makes a a seal. It's not, I don't think it's a permanent seal. I think it's only like a temporary thing, but temporary is better than nothing. So, do not make a fucking nest there, you son of a bitch! Get out of here! Oh hell no! You, you oh you're doing it inside the wall, you little cocksucker! What the hell? These bees, man, they are just something else. There's a bee moving into my shop. I have one moving on the side of my house. Right right in the very top of that overhang. And then I had another one trying to make a nest in the damn garage. Oh, hell no. I'm just about out of spray, too. You little bastards. Fucking bees. God, I hate bees so much. But, yeah. Got sidetracked by bees. But I don't like bees. Been stung by a few, and... I don't like them living on my stuff. So... But, yeah, anyways, like I said, I'm going to have to clean the cylinders. And, uh... Yeah. Clean the cylinders. Put the head back on. Duh, what is that? I think that was a bee too, wasn't it? It was going that fucker was going to sting me too, but it never did. But yeah, so am I going to get distracted by anything else now? I mean, is there going to be a falling? Is there? Is the moon going to come crashing to towards the earth now, or what? Jesus. But yeah. So another thing too is I'm going to have to order. Um, Obviously, new spark plugs and stuff like that. Problem being is I don't know if my uncle has the key. Because he is the key holder pretty much to everything that we own at the, you know, on the farm anyway. Besides my stuff. My stuff, I keep my keys. But to everything else that was my great-grandparents' stuff. Usually, you know, since he has, he's just kind of like the boss too. He, 
he can keep stuff and not lose it compared to my grandma. You give her something, she'll lose it in a couple of months. So everything goes to him because he doesn't lose stuff. So I don't know if we have the key to that truck or not. So if anybody knows where I can find a new key ignition with the keys for that truck, let me know down below. Or I don't know. I'm not really sure where I can get. I don't like I said. I don't know if we have the keys to it or not. My uncle would have to look in his stash of keys, but I honestly don't think we're gonna find them. Uh number two, the second thing that I figured out or that I found, um, I, I found the uh, serial plate to that truck. On Roosty's truck, it's on the door. My truck, it's on. It's under the dash on the driver's side, but down low, you know, um, just kind of down there in the corner. So I looked at it, and I got a little video of it, so I'll throw that video in with this. It's only like, what, like a 10-second video. That was just for me to kind of look, try to see if I could see any information on it. But, of course, it's hard to do that because the camera is not good at taking videos or pictures. But anyways, this truck... If I'm reading the serial plate number, well, I don't care about the serial number, but I think it was, I think it was like the 16,000s and something truck that was built, but this is a U.S. version. Obviously, Roosty trucks are Canadian versions, because his are just different, and I'm not sure about the weight, because, well, on my truck... I think max weight, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's got to be the max weight of this truck can hold. I don't think it's the actual weight of the truck, but maybe it is. I don't know. You guys can look at that clip and see what it says. But to me, it looks like that truck's capable of hauling, I think it just said 8,600 pounds, which is, doesn't seem like a lot for a truck that size. You, you think that would be able to hold a lot more than that. But maybe that's accurate. I don't know. And Roosty said that... He said kind of what the engine would be. Um, it, it was... He thinks it was supposed to be an SD. And I forget what the SD stands for. I think it was silver or something. I can't really... I can't exactly remember. But Roosty, he, he knows what I'm talking about. He is right. That's the... He says it was an SD... 220 I think he said it was I don't really remember but that's what I said on that plate is it's an SD 220 whatever engine rated at 90 horsepower 90 horsepower is kind of small for a truck like that like that seems a little I don't know if that's even right now that's supposed to be a factory rating I don't know if this truck's been turned up or not I don't even know if you can turn up gas engines like that. I know you can on diesels because you can turn the fuel pump up, but I don't know about on gas trucks. But <sighs> I'm pretty sure the horsepower rating was 90 horsepower. I don't know if that's accurate, but that's very that's very small for a truck that size. Like that, I was expecting at least maybe 125 or 130. So. That's telling me that if we put three bales on the back of this truck, we, first of all, we'd probably be almost maxing out that truck. I don't think we'll be, well, 8,600 pounds. Each bale is probably close to 2,000 pounds. We're almost there. We're not there all the way, but we're, we're getting there. And the only way you're going to get that truck probably up to decent speeds is you're going to have to have it wide open the whole time. Just to even get that truck to move. Oh, and it's ninety. It's ninety horsepower at thirty-six hundred RPMs. So I don't know what it would what it would really produce wide open, but at thirty-six hundred RPMs, which I don't know. I don't know if that's if that's high RPM speed. Or if that's just like, you know, like half throttle or something. I don't really know because I don't... There's no, like, RPM gauge in that truck. So, I don't think there was anyway. So, you don't really know what the RPMs are doing. So, 
if 3600 RPMs is wide open, that's all the truck can produce. Um, yeah, 90 horsepower is kind of small for a truck that size, which is actually kind of shocking. But uh, like I said, I was expecting at least 125. But but then again, it, if you can turn them up, I don't know. Maybe this truck's been turned up. I don't know. I don't think my grand my great grandparents were into you know turning things up making things more horsepower -y and they just used to think just ran stuff factory and then if it didn't do the job it didn't do the job they just made it do the job <laughs> but there goes another b oh your days are fucking numbered here yeah you're gonna really love me after i get get done with this video i'm gonna stuff right up in that corner so close an airplane so yeah um that's kind of surprising well yeah if you guys can see, i don't know if you guys will be able to read that in that video or if you guys see that video i'm sure i'll post it it shows the serial plate number if you guys can read any of that i can read most of it but um, yeah, so, and I believe there was a, uh, another YouTuber, I don't remember who it was, it might have been AJ, but I'm not 100% sure, he gave me some part numbers, I guess, to some, some filters and stuff that I guess that are designed for that truck, I think one was an air filter and one was a oil filter, which is something I need to do too, because... Before we decide to start this truck, actually, we got to change the oil. There's no way around this because it's got diesel fuel mixed in with it. And I don't think starting a truck with engine oil and diesel fuel and transmission oil all mixed together, I don't think that's going to be healthy for the truck. So we are going to have to pull the truck regardless to get it out of its little hole. And I guess, I don't know if our... Uh, little wheel ramps are strong enough for that truck but we're gonna have to get that truck up somehow uh well you could change the, the oil filter from the top but uh imagine the plug for it's underneath because we are going to have to change the engine oil and then the coolant well most of that's gone so it's going to need new coolant but i don't know i think if i if i pick at it for at least an, an hour every day, or almost every day. I think they're, I think they're talking a chance of rain tomorrow. But if we, uh, if we do that, I think by the end of, well, maybe the middle of August, maybe the son bitch will be put back together, and then we'll be able to do what we got to do. So, somebody riding around, like they're riding around on a little motorcycle. So, yeah. So, that's actually a promising thing. So, that sounds, so it kind of sounds like the truck's going to be the winner for this year. Sounds like that's going to be the truck that we work on. I was kind of hoping, hoping that the farm all would have been it, but I don't know, that one cylinder is still stuck. So, I don't know. But other than that, I think the grain truck is going to be our winner for 2020. I think that's the truck we're going to be working on, investing some money into it. But first of all, we need to, uh, you know, put it back together, clean everything, put it back together the best we can, and then... See where I can buy that oil filter from. I have no clue where the hell you can get these parts from. I don't know if Napa has them or what. He gave me like the part number, I guess, to the filters, but I don't know who would sell that part number. I'm an IH. I don't think Case IH would sell that stuff anymore. I don't know. And then. Uh, I don't know about Napa. 
we don't have a uh, I think there was another one he was recommending um, can't remember its name but we don't have them here we do have another auto parts store where my bank's at but I've never been to them but I don't know if they would sell parts for old trucks all I know of is Napa but they're, they're kind of out of the way so getting parts from them is only like a once a month kind of thing that we could do um there and then there's the gas station where I get my diesel fuel. Maybe they could order it for me. I don't know. And then there's that other. There's a couple more parts stores down there, but I don't know about the one that fixed my tractor. I don't think they'd sell that. I know they they sell the filters and stuff that would fit to my tractor. You know, like those fleet guard filters. But I don't know. Question is if maybe Fleet Guard themselves would sell. I don't know if you can buy that stuff online. I don't know. Somebody's gonna have to look into that. No, maybe I'll try to look into it too. But if you guys get to it before I do, which you guys probably will, I guess let me know who sells them filters and all that stuff. Because I mean, if I can order online, that won't be a problem. But it, it's gotta be gotta make damn sure that it fits to my style of truck. So, <clears throat> and then the blinker lights. I, I don't know. They say that I think that well, I don't know what the hell they work for. They don't even say either six volt or twelve, but I know there's LED, but if I can get the LED ones to work, I might just go with the LEDs. But I don't know. They're just a little bit more fancier. I don't really need a brighter blinker. That's what LED LEDs are good for, is that they're brighter. They last longer and they're and they run cooler. I kind of just more or less like the, you know, just LED. It's just, you know, it lasts longer, runs cooler, and all that other good stuff. But, I don't know. They don't say if it works for 6 or 12, so I have no clue. Unless since they're blinkers, maybe, maybe it doesn't really matter. And then for the switch, for the blinker switch, because i got to replace that, only one that I could find is, uh, I think, a, it's either a, I think it was a six wire. But the one that's originally in the truck is a four wire. I don't know if I can use a, use a six wire blinker set for that. But I do know that for the blinker thing, you know, the little switch for left or right. or This one has the, the four ways on it too, but I probably don't really need the four ways. But I know that they say that their switch will work for 6-volt and 12-volt systems. So I'm good there, but I can't find that version in just like a 4-wire. So I don't know if I could use a 6-wire system. I, I believe there are a 6-wire because it's got the left and right blinker. And then it has the, you put, it's got a second little knob you pull out and that's actually your 4-ways. You know, or your... I, hey, I broke down lights, you know, so it turns on all four of your blinkers at the same time to let pe people know that either you're broke down or you're moving slow. So it has that option, but this original blinker, I don't think had that, that switch. That's why it's only a four wire system. So, so I don't know. There I'm kind of stuck, but for blinkers, I imagine I probably could, um, yeah probably could just use any style of blingers I guess something else that maybe somebody can do for me um, what kind of oil does that truck take like engine oil because I imagine I just can't shove in 15w40 or whatever the fuck it is like it's kind of the same thing as what the 1586 takes but for gas engines not diesel or does it take 5w30 or I mean I don't know, I kind of want, if I could find it, it's, I don't know, I would either have oil that I can use year-round, because I can do that with the Big Red. Big Red's got a special type of oil in him, that where his oil's good down to minus 40. And that's kind of what I would like, just because if we need to run that truck in the wintertime, we can do it. And the truck does have globe, or does have a block heater, but the cows ate the end off. So 
And that was quite a few years ago, too, when they did that. So I'm, the, the uh, block heater thing is going to have to be replaced, but I think pretty much any kind will fit in there. Because I think that's a common size anyway. So probably could replace the block heater. Probably could just get one anywhere. And then be good. So... Well, yeah, so if any of you guys uh, know what to kind of do there, I guess let me know. But other than that, that's the only good news I got for you is that the truck's going to be a runner, I think. I think she's wanting to run. because she's, It's coming apart too easy, and it's working. Everything's coming apart too easy. So that could be a good thing, though. I don't know. So, anyways, guys, I'm going to take off. I got some bees to kill, like, kill I guess. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm going to take off, so I guess I have a good day and stuff and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care easy.